Welcome to Intello Videos. It is now possible to manually input the resistance for the IR drop compensation in Intello. With the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy technique, we determine the uncompensated resistance. First, a quick reminder. What is IR drop and why do we want to compensate for it? In a three electrode cell, you have a current flow when you apply a potential away from its equilibrium. Between the working electrode and reference electrode is the potential set which you want to regulate. By default, there is always some resistance from the electrolyte. This can be small or large depending on the composition of the electrolyte, if it's aqueous or organic, for example. It also depends on the temperature, the ion concentration, the distance, and the materials used in the setup. As soon as there is some current flowing, the presence of the electrolyte resistance, or uncompensated resistance, RU in this drawing, will induce a drop in potential which is related to the current flowing times the uncompensated resistance. So the potential at the working electrode is never exactly what you apply due to this ohmic drop. What does the potential need to do to compensate for this resistance? Well, basically it applies a slightly higher potential between the working electrode and the reference electrode so that the actual potential at the working electrode is the one set point in the software. And this is called IR drop compensation. The simplest way to use the uncompensated resistance is if you already know the resistance which you would like to compensate for. You can fill the resistance value in the Intello software in the apply settings command. And how much of this value you want to compensate, and in this example on this slide, is 85%. Don't go beyond 95% because the potential that could run into oscillation. So it's not possible to compensate for 100%. In this case, Intello will tell you which resistance, 102 ohm, it will use to compensate, calculated from the two parameters shown. There's also a maximum current range which could be used. This depends on the compensated resistance calculated. Automatic current ranging is not possible with IR drop compensation enabled. So you have to choose the optimum current range for your experiment if you want to use IR drop compensation. How do you measure the value of the uncompensated resistance? There are different ways to do this. And the easiest way is to use the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy method. Because in the high frequency range, usually the total resistance of your system will also be the uncompensated resistance. When you run EIS, you can see in the Bode plot the total impedance, which is the same value as the real component of the impedance in the Nyquist plot, close to zero. Start with the OCP as a DC voltage because this is the least invasive parameter for the EIS experiment. Welcome to the Intello software. First, we're going to determine the uncompensated resistance. We do this with EIS, so electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. We go to procedures, and in procedures you'll find EIS at open circuit potential. Select this one. It measures for the OCP for 60 seconds, but we're going to minimize it for time's sake, 10 seconds. First frequency, 100 kilohertz, down to let's say 1000 Hertz, and the rest we keep the same. So it's a very simple modifications of a few main parameters, and then we can start the measurement. I have a ferro ferry solution with a platinum disc electrode, working electrode, and a reference electrode, and a platinum counter electrode. So we start, and as you can follow here as well, for 10 seconds, and then the measurement will start to determine the, the uncompensated resist resistance. We start at 100 kilohertz, 
and this is my first point. So it's roughly around 68 uh, ohm of resistance. We don't need to go very low in frequency. 1000 Hertz is low enough because we're interested in the high frequencies. So we'd like to see what the real component is of in the Nyquist pot. And in this case, it's 68 ohm. So we're going to compensate for 68 ohm. Yeah, so we've determined already what the resistance will be. And if we look at the graph and zoom in, in this area, my first point, when it goes close to zero, it's going to be 68 ohms. So that's my determination of the uncompensated resistance. We write down this value, 68 ohm, and then we go to our next um, measurement, and that's cyclic voltammetry. We open again the procedure. CV staircase potential static. And in the CV staircase potential static, we can, in the apply settings, compensate for the resistance. So we can put in the IR drop. We've written down 68 ohms. We want to compensate 90% of it because at 100%, most probably the instrument goes in oscillation. With IR drop compensation, the automatic current ranging is not available. So you have to select what the maximum current range is 10 milliamp and the selected range is one milliamp. So that's the fixed range. It's where and where we're going to measure this measurement. We modify the first vertex. We go to 0 0.8 volts minus 0 0.4 volts and we go around 200 volt or 200 millivolt a second. So these are my settings. We can do that again with another apply settings command. So we can put apply settings command in there, there, and put another CV staircase command in there as well. And in this one, we don't show the IR drop. So we switch with this one off. And then we can put an automatic current range in. So the next CV, this is just to compare results with each other. And this one, again, the same parameters which I've used, 0 0.8. minus 0 0.4 and the same scan rate yeah so these are my settings of two measurements one after each other one with ir compensation and the other one without ir compensation i want to show this in the same plot so i can drag and drop my cv command in the graph and I have two type of graphs. The, the blue one is my um, compensated graph and the red one is my uncompensated graph. All right, now everything is set. When I press start, the measurement runs. So this is with IR compensation, the blue line. Nice peak separation, nice, peak, nice peaks. And the red one is without IR compensation. I can already see a clear difference between the peak separations in these graphs.
Thank you for watching Intello videos. If you found this Intello video helpful, please like and share with your colleagues. You can subscribe to the Metro Outlook YouTube channel so you are notified when new videos are available.